Ďakujem čo daj si čest. Dzień dobry. Thank you. Dziękuję for giving me the opportunity to be here this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to be in Warsaw, not only because of the uh, very famous uh, Polish hospitality, but also, and especially in this room, I've been here for a few times. And it's, to be honest with you, it's the very first time that everything is in red, uh, is in green. <laughs> this, this side is in red, but this side is in green. So last time it was in sometime in 2008. I don't know if you remember in 2008, there were some turmoil in the market. So <clears throat> once again, thank you for organizing this uh, really great uh, event and uh, for giving me the opportunity to give you a few words. Um, I wouldn't put any kind of disclaimer, this is my personal view and should not express blah, blah, blah. No, uh, what I will try to do this afternoon is to tell you very, uh, very little uh, about integrated reporting, because I'm sure that all of you already know about integrated reporting. But more important, what are the trends of the future of the corporate reporting? So where are we going now? So first, um, <clears throat> why? And I don't want to repeat all that uh, Sabine already uh, brilliantly uh, said, but we are clearly in a world where we are uh, dramatically improving from a financial, strictly financial, to more uh, contextual uh, basis. So this uh, slide highlights the change in mind in 40 years you know, this kind of switch from 8020 to 2080, from financial to non-financial, from tangible to intangible. So we are definitely, together with GRI, we are definitely in this trend, uh, taking the company much more global. The second slide is trying to uh, address about, about the same. So we are uh, comparing what uh, a company is reporting and what does the market want. So on the left side, you have the reporting content with a very, very strong focus at the bottom on the past, while the business value is based on business as usual, so you can see that the, the comparison is going down, while what is making the real value of the, of the company is about its strategy, and there is very little being uh, reported, uh, reported uh, about it. So in terms of um, some statistics, these are coming from different organizations. So first is coming from South Africa. South Africa is an interesting country because you may know that integrated reporting has been godfathered, I wouldn't say incepted, but being uh, authored by um, a quite famous uh, South African uh, professor, Professor Mervyn King. And South Africa is, at the moment, the only one country in the world mandating integrated reporting. So every single company in South Africa are required by law to create a report that is consistent with the integrated reporting framework. And I will come back in a minute on the integrated reporting framework. So um, more than three quarters of them believe that this is the way to go and it's significantly improved the dialogue with shareholders. So they are doing it because they are required. No, they are doing it because they find it uh, useful and fruitful. Um, I don't want to spend too much time here. I think it's uh, self-explanatory. But an, it's an interesting uh, feature, too, is, you know, when a company is um, communicating, of course, there needs to be a counterpart. You don't communicate just against the wall or just against a glass of water. You communicate against an investor, a policymaker, a securities regulator, what, whatever. In this case, 80% of the investors found that the story being told, being said, in an integrated reporting context is useful, is uh, valuable. So we are not doing it just for the sake of regulatory reasons. No, it's because there is a counterpart that is appreciating what is being said. So we, who are we? We is the International Integrated Reporting Council that is a multi-players uh, group. It's made of uh, 
large number of organizations from all over the world and from every single uh, business. So as you can see, investors, companies, or what we call issuers, but also policymakers, NGOs, regulators, accounting bodies, and once again, thanks to, uh, to Deloitte for hosting us uh, this afternoon. So it's, it's a very multi-cultural uh, uh, environment. So these are the business, but also coming from all over the world. So there is a very uh, smart balance uh, with all interest. Okay. That is the first and I hope the last uh, unreadable diagram of my presentation this afternoon. That's what we call the octopus. The octopus is, try, is trying to highlight how do we express the framework. So one thing that you need to, 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 to be uh, sure about, we are not setting standards. All that we are providing is a framework. And this framework is expressed by way of what we call the six capitals. As, as you can see on the left and on the right, depending on the input or the output, we try to express that every single information present in a company is related to one of these six capitals. So in other words, these six capitals are trying to articulate every kind of information that a company is, um, <coughs> is, is doing. The center is about the business model, and at the bottom, you can see that all is about value creation. And of course, not surprisingly, we are in a looping mode, so making sure that we are permanently updating uh, the, the information and making sure that this information is relevant. So once again, that is all that you need to know about the framework. Well, not only because I told you about the basic ID, the six capitals, and then we are providing some guiding principles. So again, we are not setting standards. We are not saying you need to tick all these boxes, but we are providing some basic principles to make sure that, by example, it will be comparable. So one of them is materiality. I know materiality is not only from integrated reporting. Every single accounting standard setter, whether it's IFRS or US GAAP, are very vocal on um, <coughs> materiality, making sure that every single information that is relevant to your business will be disclosed. That's about materiality. Another very important concept is about conciseness. There is a common trend that if we ask more, the report will be bigger. We try to go the other way around. We try to go in a way that the, 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 the required information is made available. And if someone is willing to get more, it's somewhere. And you know, we'll talk about technology later. We are in such a digital world where everything is available. Conciseness is definitely a key element where we can make things more with less. Last, I also would like to talk, talking about technology, I also would like to talk about connectivity. We are here in a building. This building, upon Warsaw Stock Exchange annual report, is being valued, I presume, according to IFRS, am I right? In IFRS, you have a specific standard that is IS16, Property Plan and Equipment, that is defining the way that this building needs to be disclosed in the annual report. But at the same time, this building is creating gas emission. The same building is having employees, or has people, is consuming water. So there is a lot of different information related to this building. Connectivity is all about connecting these different piece of information. I'm talking about a building, I could talk about an aircraft, I could talk about anything. All that I'm saying is about connectivity. In terms of adoption, you can see a number of uh, figures. Um, so we have over 1,000 organizations out of, let's say, 60,000 companies uh, in the world that are publicly listed. 
So we have about uh, 1,000 or maybe 1,500 that are creating an integrated reporting. So that's not so much. But if you compare that the framework that I just told you, it's just two years old, it's quite significant. So in just two years, the number of companies that are creating a, a report is, uh, is, is growing. Two things that are not on this slide. I'm so pleased to meet uh, Sabine. Sabine is coming from uh, a really nice country. In this country, in the Netherlands, one company out of three, so one third of every single listed companies are already engaged in the integrated reporting journey. So you can imagine that in less than two years, one third of all Dutch companies have decided to embrace this, uh, this, um, this journey. Another example from the UK. The UK, like every country, is requiring uh, companies to provide a financial report, a non-financial report in advance of the EU legislation. But they also have to provide a strategic report. And a strategic report, you might treat it as a kind of executive summary. So it might be one page, might be 10 pages, 20 pages. But the purpose of this strategic report is to provide a global overview of what's going on in the company, whether it's financial, non-financial, whatever. This strategic report, upon the Financial Reporting Council, which is the policymaker or the regulator that is requiring UK companies to, to report, this strategic report needs to be consistent with integrated reporting. So in the UK, the, the market is going there too. Last, uh, Sabine again mentioned the uh, EU uh, directive. It's quite interesting that when the EU disclosed the um, amendment to the transparency directive in 2014 in advance of the uh, requirement in 1st Jan 2017, so every single listed company will have to disclose non-financial information by 1st Jan uh, 2017, when they released this requirement, they said, we observe very closely what's going on with integrated reporting and we believe that is that this is the step ahead so the step ahead is the the, the right word that the european commission was using to describe integrated reporting in their mind okay one quick word or two quick slides about uh, what is driving me personally which is the technology initiative it's a very interesting uh, project made of about 13 companies big four firms um, software vendors like SAP, like Fujitsu, service companies like Ados and others, very big companies like the big four firms, but also very tiny ones. So we have a Polish uh, company, BRG, which is based in, in Poznan. We have S4SB or IT6, which is uh, in the Netherlands, which is on one man company. So very interesting balance in size in business and also uh, geographically because some are US, the most are EU, and some are also like Fujitsu is coming from uh, Japan. What we aim to do is to release first quarter next year uh, an answer to these four principal four principal questions. Why, how, what, and when disclose with technology in an integrated report. So again, if you are interested in the answers to these questions, please let me know, and I'll make sure to share with you the blueprint that we aim to release for public consultation in a few weeks from now. OK, this is my very personal view. What I'd like to do is to compare what is the reporting of today and the reporting of tomorrow. So I'm sure that you will not disagree with me. Today, a report is mostly financial. It's mono gap. It's only one gap, whether it's IFRS, US, US gap, Polish gap. As I said earlier, it's looking back, backwards. It's about past performance. It's results oriented. In the best case, there is some kind of structure, but in most of the cases, it's unstructured. If we can compare Apple, it's a green apple to a yellow apple, but it's never a green, nice green apple to a really nice green apple on the other. It's, of course, paper-based, or when talking about digital, it's about PDF. I'm not sure if PDF is digital. And last but not least, 
what is being disclosed is what companies want to disclose. Tomorrow, it's holistic, it's global, so it's not just financial, it's multi-gap, whether it's GRI, CDP, IFRS, so different sets of standards. It's definitely about the past, about the present, but mostly about the future. It's about the value, so show me the money. It's value and performance centric. As I said earlier, it will be connected. We definitely go for green apple to green apple. It will by all means be digital and it will be what users want, users being the recipients of the information. The question is, I think we all agree for that, the question is about when, and my own prediction is between now and 2020, so we have about four or five years to go. I would like to end with two reports and one or three reports, let's put it this way. One is, um, is a report that has been issued last week, just an uh, interest, interesting coincidence by Deloitte in the, in the UK. First, is about the size of a report in 10 years, so 50% longer. I'm sorry to say that it's a bit contradictory with my presumption because I, do, I keep do expecting that a, a report will be shorter. The package of five, the package of five is, is about the IFRS, and the impact is quite significant. Coming from the IFRS world, because I used to, to work at IASB, I think that this impact will diminish because the number of standards is diminishing. So we are more and more going in a kind of um, a maintenance uh, mode. So I hope that uh, this impact will diminish. The linkage, not surprisingly, remains very, very poor. It's not so good. Non-GAAP and more and more explicit references to integrated reporting. Another very interesting uh, piece of paper that has been issued a few weeks ago by the European Federation of Accountants. It's about the future of corporate uh, reporting. And just a few statements out of this uh, report that is open for public consul consultation until mid of next year, until mid of uh, 2016. First, corporate reporting, um, the audience will be uh, bigger and bigger. So that's the first evidence. The second, the financial reporting impact will diminish while the uh, non-financial uh, will uh, go up. Connecti interconnectivity again and again will uh, dramatically increase. And last but not least, just to feed my own food, is uh, technology will play uh, a very important role. Just for you to know, in this document, there is 990 references to technology. It's a document of over 130 pages. So just to give you an idea of how the European Federation of Accountants uh, believe that um, technology is important. I would like to end just by uh, referring to uh, a report from uh, Harvard um, um, Business uh, Review where they are providing a kind of a ranking of the best CEOs in the world and not surprisingly Jeff Bezos from uh, Amazon was number one in 2014 and was also number one in 2015 if they kept the same criteria in 2015 than in 2014. But the criteria have changed between 14 and 15, where they decided to add something like 20% of non-financial. And as you can see, just by this change of criteria, he moved from number one to number 87. So just to tell you how important it is. Thank you for your attention.